Hello drummers and other creatures, today we're going to be looking at the grooves for Move On Up by Curtis Mayfield, a fantastic funky soul number from the 1970s. I'm not sure who the original drummer was, uh, if you try and look it up all you get is credits for the percussionist, uh, so if you know who the kit drummer is I'd be interested to hear. Meanwhile the grooves sound something like this. So let's get stuck in. First we're going to be looking at the main groove in the main part of the song and after that we're going to check out the variation of the groove that's very very cool and that happens in the extended version in the second part of the, the long recording that you find under that name. Let's listen to the first groove played nice and slowly. It's played on the ride. I think he's also using a, a china. He's riding his china a little bit and he's going to be accenting his china later on, his or her, I suppose. Um, and uh, the, the basic beat is eighth notes on the ride, snare on two and four, and then we've got the bass on the one and the and, and then the three and the three E and A. Uh. So we've got this. Now what makes this interesting is the ghost note pattern. So let's have a listen to what's happening there without the bass drum. And now let's chunk this groove. Let's look at each component uh, in terms of what's happening in each beat. So first on the first beat we've got One and, ride and bass, easy enough. Next, on the two, we've got two with the ride and the snare together, and then ah and ah, we've got a couple of ghost notes following the main snare drum note. The first two beats give us this. straightforward. Next we've got the bass on the three and then we've got ghost notes on the E and on the snare. Okay so we've got uh, that oh and then we've got an R uh on the bass drum so we've got three E and R. Uh. With the ride in there we get this. Simple. So let's play the first three beats now. And again. And then finally we have a snare. Um, actually it happens the same as the two. We've got the snare on the four and then two ghost notes on the and and the ah, like this. Okay, so again, same thing has happened on the two. Now, let's put that all together one more time and it should seem fairly coherent. Uh, notice this, this method of chunking. I've done two things really to, to break down this beat. First, I played uh, the bass and the snare sort of with simple patterns without the ghost notes. Uh, and then I played the, the ride 
and then the snare, including the ghost notes, but I omitted the bass. So we kind of split between the hands and the feet a little bit so we could um, look at the, the different components of the group. Then I did what's called chunking, right? I chunked the beat. I looked at the, the first beat, the second beat, the third beat, and the fourth beat in isolation, and then I kind of stuck them together. And this is a really neat way for, neat, did I just say that? This is a cool way to, uh, to put beats together. It's, it works for me a lot of the time, okay? So we're gonna go like this. So by working on each individual component on its own, you then put together enough ability to then stick the whole thing together and then play it slowly as much as you need to. Once you've memorized that, and once you've got that sort of flowing in your body nicely, you can try and bring it up to the speed of the song. Now let's take a look at that second groove. This happens after the, the break in the first part of the song and we get a really cool little tom part. Slow down, it sounds like this. In the recording, it's quite clear that there's a China symbol involved there. I used to have a China some years ago, but um, for various reasons, I got rid of the thing. Mostly because if you hit it more than once in an evening, people would get offended. And I just thought it was not worth carrying around, to be honest. But um, notwithstanding that, I've got this reasonably crushable ride and I'm using that. If you have um, a crash separately on the same side of the ride, uh, that's quite handy. Uh, otherwise, you can move over and crash the crash bit. Uh, by crossing I know, over to uh, this side of the kit. Um, I don't have a symbol, I'm a bit lazy to set it up today. So let's break this down as well by chunking. First of all, the one in the and is two bass drum notes with the ride. Pretty straightforward. Next we've got the two e and a, uh, and this is where we get the little fancy schmancy tom thing. Okay, two and a. Uh. Now, you'll notice that to facilitate the tom note on the Anna, I'm going to play that with my left hand, so the snare is going to be played uh, with my right hand, and I'm coming off the ride for that purpose. To Anna. When I first listened to it, I thought he might be going... That, but you can't really do that at the speed, so... Don't bother. You might, well, I don't know, do bother if you fancy, have a go. But this seemed to me uh, the right way to do it. And uh, oddly enough, I found someone else playing the very same part in the same way. So that kind of validated my thoughts on the subject. So one more time before I digress too much. That's your two Anna. Next, we have the three E Anna. We're not going to. These are, are ghost notes, play them softly. Oh, I missed the ride. That's the three E Anna. And then on the four, we're going to be playing, in my case, I'm going to be crashing my ride, but if you've got your china or a crash there on the side, you can hit that crash. Uh, so we've got a nice big accent. And then we're going to play the four loudly, then and on the ride, normal stroke, and then we've got a little ghost note at the end on the R. So we've got this. And again, let's put that together. So that about wraps it up for Move On Up by Curtis Mayfield. It's short and sweet, but hopefully you've got enough information in there to be learning those grooves. 
and don't worry too much if it takes a little while to get it up to speed. The song goes at a fair clip, even though I think my demonstration at the beginning was a little bit fast, but there you go, I was getting excited. Meanwhile, if you'd like some one-on-one -on -one help with your drumming, I'm available via the internet, so uh, take a look at the description box and uh, just down there, and uh, my contact details are there. So get in touch with me if you think I could help you with some drumming issues. Meanwhile, I think it's time for you to go off and practice.